All right, it's time we start talking about breakpoints. Breakpoints are these little spots that we can add to the width of our website that determine when the layout changes and how the layout changes. So here on this particular uh, demo, uh, which is a part of a web page, I have no breakpoints. Well, technically, I have one breakpoint, 960, uh, which for those of you who have edited video, it's like having one keyframe. It, it, you need two in order to make a change happen. So right now, no change is happening whatsoever. And you'll notice that as I go beyond this point here, uh, the layout of these objects does not continue to stretch in width. And that's because of this little icon here, the arrows. I could say I want to continue expanding this on and on and on, or I want to stop it. I want to cap it at my widest breakpoint, which right now is 960. So a lot of people are asking now, how wide should my widest breakpoint be? How wide should my mobile breakpoint be? Uh, what about iPad? Do I need a, a tablet or iPad or... Uh, large smartphone like a Galaxy Note, do I need a, a breakpoint for that? Because it's much bigger than a phone and still smaller than a computer screen. And all these questions are being asked, and there are really there are two major schools of thought when it comes to adding breakpoints. And one is adding the breakpoint based on the device or the size of the screen on the device. The other school of thought is based on the design, the design breaking, so to speak. So as I compress this down, we get to a point where the design doesn't make sense anymore. Things are bumping into each other, and it's just, it's not looking good anymore. So that would be a good time to add a breakpoint. If you were doing this based on uh, your generic, typical uh, mobile breakpoints or your generic, typical uh, tablet breakpoints, uh, one, you already have a problem because what are the generic, typical breakpoints? Uh, here's an unfortunate fact. Android devices, there are more than 24,000 physically different Android devices. So what's the most popular size for a screen? Here's where it gets interesting. The screen size, the screen resolution, is not what matters. Every device and the web browser of that device has this attribute called the viewport size. So an iPhone, for example. Let's take the iPhone 6 Plus because it's a weird one that's easy to understand. The iPhone 6 Plus turned on its side is 1920 by 1080. That's 1080p. It's the resolution of your 60-inch plasma TV. So is that a practical size for viewing things uh, at the same resolution that you would view them on a computer screen that's 1920 by 1080 or a 60-inch plasma TV that's 1920 by 1080? The answer is no. Everything would be so small you would have to zoom in. You wouldn't be able to read it because the screen's so small and it doesn't have to do with the resolution. So there are all these viewport sizes uh, a very common viewport width is 320 pixels. Even though the screens aren't 320 pixels, it renders things as if the screen is 320 pixels. It's kind of a fake out. So let's take a look here at popular viewport sizes. And you can see that uh, this, this data was pulled from a database of all different viewport sizes. And I was looking at it, and my head was spinning. And I was thinking, well, wouldn't it be nice if they just put them in order of most common to least common? But they didn't, so I did. So 320 is the most common portrait orientation viewport size, uh, which is very small, but there are a lot of small smartphones out there. And then 480 is the most common landscape, which these are most likely uh, related. It's most likely a lot of these 320 devices turned on their side are 480. Uh, but what it really comes down to is, uh, based on this data, which is a, a combination of tablets and smartphones, uh, you can safely presume that a smartphone is going to have a very small viewport. So if you create a breakpoint that's any wider than 480, then you're probably going to be capturing most uh, smartphones uh, turned on their side, uh, both portrait and landscape. And uh, that's not a bad idea, uh, setting your breakpoint at 480. But there are a lot of bigger devices. There's the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6 Plus, um, and there are a lot of those out there in the world. So you may want to consider a wider mobile breakpoint. But uh, if we forget about the devices for a second, let's go back to the design. Let's say that we add our first breakpoint, our mobile breakpoint, at uh, 480. So as we make this smaller and smaller and smaller, um, well, that doesn't make much sense because our design is already completely destroyed by the time we get to 480. So in this example, this is a good example of let's not think about the device, let's think about the design. So I'm going to go and squeeze this down until the design doesn't make much sense anymore. And right about here, it starts getting a little bit squeezed. So I might want to add a new breakpoint here. And on the breakpoint bar, we can now see that I have this layout and this layout. And if you're anywhere in between and you try to make a change, it snaps to the breakpoint that you're within. It won't let you make a change here 
when I click, you can actually see my cursor is saying, no, you can't make a change. When I click, it kind of scrolls me back out. Uh, so you can see that things are getting a little bit funky already, and we want to make sure of a few things before before we know that we're going to see success as we shrink this down and down. You can see that already things are not centered, and there are a number of reasons that that stuff can happen, that things kind of slip and slide off center. Uh, one reason is that at your largest breakpoint, things weren't centered in the first place, and if we drag this to and fro, we can check and see if it is centered, and it looks like it is actually centered. Now the other thing is, the different objects are going to flow with the browser based on where they are relative to the middle and the sides and the spaces between them. So it's very automatic, so it doesn't always do what you want. If I select this box in the middle, this button in the middle, and this icon in the middle, and I go up here to the control bar up here, there is uh, a little box next to pin that allows us to pin how this moves with the browser. So if I click the center, I'm saying keep this lined up with the center of the browser. And then for these guys, you can probably guess, I'm going to say keep lined up with the right side of the browser. And with these guys, I'm going to say keep lined up with the left side of the browser. So now as I scale it down, see the one in the middle stays in the middle and the ones on the side uh, move inward. But you'll notice there's no accommodation to the size of these objects with regard to the size of the space that they're in. So I can select these, all of them. And I can go back up here, and next to the pinning, there's resize. And I can tell the resize that I would like these to be responsive width and height. And when I do that, I'm saying, well, let's fix this size problem as we scroll in. You'll notice the text boxes don't seem to be doing it. And that's because text boxes actually can't have responsive width and height. So they didn't actually even do anything. Those I'm going to set to responsive width, because that's our best option for text. And you'll see the text actually begins to wrap as the container for the text gets squeezed and the icons get smaller. Then we get to our mobile breakpoint. And now that we're at our mobile breakpoint, we can change this layout all together. Uh, this actually, this could be a tablet layout uh, at this particular width. But let's just say that we just want to have a big size and a small size. So we'll say that this is the smaller size because it is. It's the smaller of the two. So now I'm going to make a drastic change. Here's where, it's get, here's where it gets cool. Uh, I'm going to make this taller way taller. I'm going to scoot this button down. And I'm going to lay it out in a way that's more conducive to a skinny squished screen. I'm going to take this and scoot it down. I'm going to take this and scoot it down, center it up. I'm going to take this and move it up top, front and center. And I'm not lined up with the center of the page, but I could select all these. This would probably be the smart thing to do. Select all these things and go over here to a line and tell it to center align. So that's much better. And you can see here that I didn't give myself enough height. So I'm going to give myself even more height. And I'm going to slide this down. And I'm going to kind of vertically center this up a little bit. OK, cool. So now that we've got that going on, uh, as we get smaller and smaller and smaller, we're not going to have the same problem. But see how we've got this sort of slip and slide issue again, where it's not centered up. When we added the pinning to center these things, we had already created this breakpoint. So this breakpoint doesn't inherit the changes that we make here to the layout. So I've got to go and do it again. It's a really good idea to get all these details dialed in before creating your breakpoints, so that way it gets carried over. But a lot of things change anyway, so it almost doesn't even matter. Like in this case, I'd still have to select them all and choose center, because some of these were set to the left and some of these were set to the right. So that wouldn't have been helpful in the first place. So now let me scroll up, and as I make it smaller, you can see on this breakpoint, I also told the icons to resize because they needed to because we were losing horizontal space. And then when we get to here, they no longer resize because I didn't tell them to. And they really don't need to. We don't have an issue with the width of these items as uh, the viewport becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's really a non-issue. You also have, with your breakpoints, uh, some properties that you can play with. And you can double-click on the breakpoint and you can view these properties. So a breakpoint doesn't even have to be uh, responsive, so to speak. You can tell it to be fixed width, so it doesn't, it doesn't act stretchy. And then when you get to the point that you'd like it to change, you can still add a breakpoint and change it. And that one also doesn't have to be stretchy. And I've noticed a, kind of a trend on a lot of websites. And uh, I'm trying to remember which website I saw this on recently. Um, I believe it was Prezi, uh, the, the website for that slideshow, that online slideshow builder. Uh, Prezi 
has a semi-responsive layout where the bigger breakpoints are static, where nothing is stretchy, but it switches from layout to layout to layout as you shrink the window. Uh, and then once you get to the smallest size, it becomes elastic because mobile devices vary so much in size and you want it to, to fit uh, no matter what. So you get to choose from breakpoint to breakpoint if you want it to be fixed or if you want it to be fluid and you get to adjust the breakpoint width here and set your margins and stuff. Um, another thing is the little icons up here. You might be wondering what they mean. That relates to the fluid versus static. So if I change this from fluid to fixed where it's static, see those little arrows go away and uh, that represents the fixed width static and that represents the uh, elastic or fluid width. So I'll cancel that and it'll go back to being fluid. And then again, don't forget about these little arrows because these little arrows determine whether or not things continue to stretch and in this case grow because I told them they were allowed to grow, which can cause problems. So I'm going to cap it there. And you'll notice that the background continues to grow and you might be thinking, well, you just said it doesn't continue to grow. So what's up with that? It has to do with the old school stretch to browser width. You guys might remember we could do 100% page width objects before the responsive update came out in Muse. We still have that option, stretch to browser width, which overrides this maximum cap that we have here. So even if we don't allow the page to expand, we can still do our 100% page width elements, which is great for things like this backgrounds, background boxes, um, hero images, hero slideshows at the top of the page, banners, uh, navigation bars, uh, and footers. You get to have all that continue to expand even if you cap the main layout so it doesn't go absolutely haywire on a large screen. So this is the idea. We're just adding these breakpoints and we're kind of playing with them uh, to make sure that our design works at every given size and that we don't have any weird collisions. So again, it's up to you if you want to consider the devices more or if you want to consider the design more. But if you put the devices first and you put the screen sizes first, you're going to have a problem with your design. It's more than likely that you're going to have things bumping into one another, running into one another. So consider the design first. That's rule number one, design first. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I've got more responsive stuff coming soon. I've got more widgets coming soon, templates, all kinds of good stuff. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, post up in the comments what you guys are doing about your breakpoints because uh, nobody has to agree. Everyone's going to get to a different spot with this because, uh, again, it is based on your design and your design only, and they're all going to be different. So stay tuned.